to be one of the uh, speakers. I'll take a few moments just to introduce the product we're talking about and some work that I've done with the product in the past, and then I'll introduce Dr. Maltry and Dr. Salvo. So my, uh, my particular talk is just to simply introduce those of you that don't understand or know about this particular product. So this is enabling outpatient total knee with single-use instrumentation. So the overview, obviously, will have uh, two different speakers, and they'll talk about their use of this uh, particular product in the outpatient world and their migration to this particular product. Uh, we'll talk about GMK efficiency. That is the product at hand tonight. And I'll get to introduce uh, Dr. Zmalchi and Salvo accordingly. As you know, we're in the middle of an epidemic in total joint replacement. So uh, this is a, a curve well familiar to many, many surgeons around the country and around the world. This is the demand for total knee and total hip arthroplasty as forecasted through 2030. And you can see the rise in total knee replacement grows starting around 2015, right about uh, two years ago, almost in an exponential level. And so hospitals faced with this uh, have a choice. They can either become total joint factories or the healthcare system and hospitals can look at some sort of other type of avenue or venue to service these patients, such as an ambulatory surgery center. Well, for me, when I think about doing surgeries in a surgery center, I think of four different reasons why I would want to do that. The first one is safety. Uh, it's well known that patients in the hospital have higher risk for complications. Uh, patients in the hospital have higher risk for hospital-acquired infections. Uh, patients in hospitals do worse and have higher complication rates when they go to inpatient rehab as referred from a hospitalization setting. Patient satisfaction. Patients that I do in my surgery center are, are probably, probably the happiest patients I have in my, in my practice. I have patients that come from all over the country and even the world to get done in an outpatient setting uh, because they really appreciate the attention to detail, the attention to care, and it's truly a great patient experience uh, when patients get done in the surgery center. And we all know and have the experience of patients uh, wanting to get done in an outpatient setting where they can recover at home that evening, where we've done a good job with their surgery and their pain control and perioperative. And I know Dr. Falvo is going to talk to us about that a little bit later. Obviously, you can't avoid the economics in the situation of modern healthcare. It's getting more expensive. Uh, each and every year to, to handle these particular patients and handle these procedures in an inpatient setting. Therefore, uh, migrating these uh, procedures to an outpatient world will potentially save the healthcare system 30 to 50 percent per procedure, as it's well known that ASCs have about 44 percent on average the cost of a regular inpatient. And obviously, for, for me as a surgeon who owns part of a surgery center, the ability to participate in that economic uh, uh, venue is, uh, can't be overlooked. And for me, at the end of the day, the most important reason why I like ambulatory surgery centers is I have more control over the episode of care. Um, the, the words that are spoken to the patients in the preoperative area, the operative area, the postoperative, all those employees have been educated by me, and so a single message goes through to the patient when uh, when a patient has a single message of care that's being delivered to them, they feel remarkably comforted in what's happening to them. And so I can control that better in a, uh, in a surgery center, or I can control the process and what message is delivered to my patient. Well, how about the obstacles to doing these particular uh, procedures in an outpatient setting? Well, first there's what I would call institutional inertia. And this is, uh, this is something that applies to both hospitals and surgeons as they think about taking these cases to a more rapid recovery outpatient type of surgery center. You have to rethink everything you do in your algorithm of how you take care of patients and how you handle things. And sometimes that's a lot of work and you don't really want to do it. And so I call that sort of institutional inertia. Obviously, hospital systems would be very slow to migrate cases to an outpatient setting because they obviously get paid uh, to do these uh, and paid quite well to do these in an inpatient setting. There are contractual obligations where some insurance companies will not allow their patients to be done in an outpatient setting. And there's finally, uh, the, when perhaps one of the biggest parts of this particular evening is the logistical issues. 
There's equipment issues. There's equipment that normally surgery centers don't have that's required to do these types of cases. There's storage for those particular uh, cases and storage of equipment. And there's obviously a central sterilizer. Surgery centers in general do not have this big sterilizer where they can sterilize multiple pans at a single particular time for a particular case. They have one small sterilizer that they're used to running just small, uh, small general orthopedic trays and arthroscopy equipment. Well, how about the efficiency and how can this help? Well, this is the product we're talking about tonight. The GMK Efficiency is a complete single-use instrument set for either implantation of a GMK sphere or a GMK primary total knee. GMK stands for Global Medacta Knee. And so every time you do a case, you get uh, three different trays. You get a general set, which will give you the general instruments, and then you get size-specific femur and a size-specific tibia. And you open these blister packs, and you have all the instruments that you need in one particular setting. So here's what it looks like in my OR. This is my particular OR, and you can see on the right a traditional case that I'm about to do with four different pans, and on the left you have a simple uh, box that's delivered the day of surgery or just before day of surgery, just in time delivery. You open that box, and it's filled with blister packs with the type of implant and type of instruments that you need for that particular surgery. This is what it looks like on the back table when you open it up. You have these particular instruments, and you can see this is from my first case almost uh, four and a half years ago. We get the instruments out and we use the instruments. I use the patient-specific technology as far as doing my resection. You can see once we do that, you use this uh, single-use four-in-one cut guide that you attach to the distal femur. You finish the femoral resections in routine fashion. You then use the patient-specific cut guide on the tibia and then use these plastic single-use instruments to go ahead and finish the tibia. The trials are made of plastic as well, which does take some getting used to, and Dr. Maltry will talk to us more about that later. But you can trial flexion, extension, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have single-use plastic instruments to do your impaction of your final implant, and that's the final implant uh, already once it's already done. And at the end, you can get to where you can see where they've, you've, get, you've been given more than enough instruments uh, to do the particular case, and you see I've reduced the even the single use set is only about 13 or 14 instruments. The staff love it. There's a, a, a difference of about 69 pounds per case, which they don't have to lift or open uh, to both open or close the case. So they're quite happy with that. And I have done some research with it. Uh, this is a white paper I published in May of this year, or in September, I'm sorry, September of this year, uh, looking at my experience with this particular efficiency instrumentation in my hand. The first thing I wanted to do with this was just simply compare it to standard cases versus the efficiency. So I wanted to know, was I hurting anybody or was I achieving equal results with the efficiency? And so I looked at my clinical and radiographic and complication outcomes, and this is the data here. You can see I basically started with the same patient and achieved the same results for both my radiology, my knee society, and my operative score. And so at the end of the day, I had no radiographic or complication differences that were statistically significant. So then I took it a step further, and I wanted to see if there was any type of economic benefit to this type of uh, equipment. And I broke it down into four different categories. First was patient safety, operating room turnover type time, sterilization, and logistical. Now, the patient safety is one in which you save uh, infection risk. And so what we did is we modeled a 10% reduction in uh, infection rate uh, over a 90-day period, 90 day period of time. But that infection risk is about 0.9%. So it's a very small number. The operating room time we divided up and categorized based on time with regard to turnover, setup management, and instrument management. The sterilization department obviously is completely bypassed with single-use instruments. And so since it's bypassed, you don't use any employees, there are no trays to be sterilized. And on average in the United States, it's known that an average tray costs about $88 to run through a sterilizer in the hospital. And then obviously there's logistical uh, costs, such as loaner sets. And there's a tremendous financial and employee time use uh, in particular uh, to, do this, uh, to do cases with loaner instrumentation. Our, our representatives around the country that are online know that it takes six to eight trays to do a case and they're going to sometimes spend up to 10 to 11 hours to process those case instruments around the case to acquire them 
from, an, from a shipping pulp company, sterilize them, and then send them back. And you can see when I broke it down financially, I broke out the real winner was the sterilization. They saved about $700 in a case being able to bypass that. The loaner instruments, so the company uh, saved a little bit. Obviously, patient safety, if you're only looking at a very small uh, rate of uh, decrease in infection risk, it's a very small amount when you go to a per case basis. But all told, you're saving about $1,200 with the introduction of the single use. And you save about 30 minutes per case. And a, a physician like me that has a very bu busy arthroplasty patient, uh, practice, if I can save 30 minutes per case, that's a significant amount of time at the end of the year for me. So in conclusion, my back table has gone one of evolution over the last uh, four or five years since I started using this particular product to one that looks like this, to one that looks like uh, the one on the right. And in actual fact, I've narrowed it down now to just simply about 13 instruments for me to do my case. So with that, I'll say thank you to Medacta for providing us this product that makes our cases go nice and smooth. And thank you for sponsoring this, uh, this webinar.